Welcome back to Elden Ring The Ultimate Guide, episode 39, and we are heading straight to the Grand Lift of Rold because it is time to do Snowfield. If this is your first time watching any of these videos, check out the video linked in the description. If you have any tips of your own, leave them in the pin tips comment so people can look over them. And here we're going to hoist the secret medallion. We picked up both halves, uh, one from Old Elvis and one in uh, Castle Sol earlier in the mountaintops. And we are heading straight into the catacomb because this is kind of a strange one. It starts you halfway through in the hidden path to the Halig Tree. So we are going to do, I think, the catacomb first and then head to the Grace Correct. before tackling the rest of Snowfield. First enemies we're going to encounter in here are Volga Militia and some octopuses. Now the octopuses can drop the octopus headpiece and the Volga Militia can drop their helmet, their armor, the gauntlet, the greaves, the Volga Militia saw, watch out for the beast claw, and the Volga Militia show tell, depending on whichever one they are wielding. There's the saw, actually. Very good weapon. Halberd that inflicts oh, yeah. bleed. Um, grabbing the warming stone and just walk past this guy. Don't fight him. Just leave him be. He's stuck in that room. He's simply too big. Yeah, it's just not worth it. So, some more Volga Militias to kill, but otherwise, there's like a weird gimmick in this particular area. Another invisible path that is just very, very obnoxious. So, you drop down here, and oh look, you're not dead inexplicably. And then you can head over here. And there's a, an invisible wall. I mean, this is a, a nice collection of every irritating mechanic that is uh, permeated <laughs> through all the Souls games. It but, is yeah, the FromSoft get... special, this dungeon. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Uh, it is interesting that you have to go through the dungeon before you even get to the snowfield, but that's fine. Um, I remember this particular room being a bit annoying. You can get kind of ganged up on here, and they do a, sig a significant amount of damage. Now, something to mention, right? Snowfield is another area that kind of increases the difficulty of the game. Enemies hit harder, they've got more health, etc. This is definitely a point in the game where we would suggest taking off the Radigan Sore Seal. At this point, you're definitely getting diminishing returns on what it's offering you. And the amount of extra damage that you're taking, kind of, you do feel it by this point. And uh, an easy replacement would just be using one of the Dragon Crest Talismans that give you extra defense. Uh, particularly physical defense in this case. The elemental defenses, the defense ones you would use would just be more for specializing uh, for certain enemies. But you'll definitely notice an increase, or rather a decrease in the damage that you take uh, from doing that. And I think we need to kill this particular octopus, of which Lion's Claw is very good at killing. And uh, that lets us get the, the juicy item below. Which is a, an old fang. Epic. Yeah, it wasn't fucking worth it at all. Although that Prefel Strike was uh, absolutely a perfect case study of why Prefel Strike is so good. Yes. Because really, we've taken really damage from it, except no, we fucking didn't. Um, yeah, Prefel Strike really puts in a lot of work. Uh, here's another room where you can easily get ganged up on, so definitely be aware here. These uh, That sort of special attack they do is uh, pretty devastating actually if you yeah get, the, like the beast claw you you get that incantation actually as part of uh, Garank's quest um, yes. it's not very good when you use it naturally but when an NPC <laughs> uses it it's fucking devastating of course um, why, why wouldn't it be you can actually do a little trick in this room so here we're heading straight into the boss but if you lead those vulgar militia through that narrow passageway and switch to pull out rotten breath you can kill them before they can even get to you by blasting them through the doorway because they'll all single file into the column of damage that um rotten breath puts out taking all of our gear off and slapping on the i think that's data cars were yeah we so just put means... on <laughs> so because we are fighting a mimic to your enemy when it comes in, it has our talismans, so it now has Dedekar's Woe, <laughs> which means it will now take more damage. Now, I'm telling you right now, it is going to be Wailer on you with its fists. It cannot do enough damage to you for you to even bot, like, just take your time, put your equipment on. Look, uh, it is doing about two damage per punch to us, so we can take about a thousand punches off this thing before we die. <laughs> so as you can see yeah. that's how much damage it done to us 
Um, oh look, it's all back because we yeah. hit the once. <laughs> yeah. So that means it done two percent of her HP in that space of time. So yeah, you really can you you have the time. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, this one can heal. What? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I don't know that. That's cool. Um, Black Flame Monk, I'm on. Um, actually not a bad Spirit Ash, because it can deal Black Flame, as the name suggests. So anytime he uses one of those Black Flame attacks, he will deal... I think it's something like... Is it 1% per second? The tick it's for Black Flame? One or two... It's it's actually it's, it's a bit different. It's like 2% plus a little bit extra per second, or something like sure, that for Black sure. Flame. Not as good but as still, Destined Death. That's... It's not as good as Destined Death, but it is still percentile damage, so he is one of the better... Better Spirit Ashes, I would say. But would you use it over Tish? Almost no. certainly not. <laughs> God no. And that's what you that's what you need to you need to weigh up, you know? Um, is it Tish? Is it the mimic? Is it the boys? If the answer to if 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 no, no, and no, then we're not using it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we picked up a few extra items there, I think it was the, the spell Drake Talisman plus two, so that's like super spell defense. Um but now we're going to head back to Grank just quickly because I think this might have been the last death route in the game. Yes, I think it was. And for this, we get... Big Smithing Stone? Yes, there we go. Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. And so now that is his quest done. Great stars. And yeah, that's his, that's his quest done. And now we are heading into the snowfield. Now, hopefully, uh, you guys can follow along. It's the snowfield, the visibility is very poor, and it's probably the worst area in the game because of it. Uh, so what we are doing is we are heading directly north-ish, getting this first grace. It's actually a little bit slightly to the right north, but now we are going to be heading in a straight line north from the grace, and we're just going to ignore everything, every enemy, everything, uh, and we're just going to go straight north because that is where the um, the map fragment is. And really, I think having the map in this area is certainly the best thing that you can do uh, in terms of your navigational abilities. So we're just going to fucking ignore everything, go over every rock, every bump in the road, and just head straight north until we're from the grace until we get the map fragment. And then we warp straight back to that grace, and then we can tackle the area because we'll have the map to see where the fuck we are and all this shit. You see, if the visibility in Snowfield was like it is now, where it's a bit limited, but not like two feet in front of your face limited, I wouldn't hate it nearly as much. Yeah, yeah. Or in if fact, it'd be quite a fun area if that was the case, but since it's basically frigid outskirts 2 for anyone who's played Dark Souls 2, it's fucking hell on earth. Yeah, and if there was a way of turning the snow off, I'd be fine with that. If the snow was periodic, I'd maybe be slightly more fine with that. But nah, it's just fucking constant. All suffering all the time. Head yeah. back to the first grace and hug the left wall, I guess, heading to the northwest. He got yes, down between so these two trees. Or three it's not trees. So much, sorry, it's not so much hugging the left wall, but hugging the cliff that is uh, west. Hugging the westmost cliff. And uh, by doing so, and then you also drop down a little bit and, and there'll be a sort of ghostly <coughs> tree or whatever. But by following the path that we took, you'll reach this um, mass grave. We're going to take care of this guy with Lion's Claw. because God, these guys really get the short end of the stick in this game. And I think this one is guaranteed to drop the Rotten Battle Hammer. I'm not sure if it's guaranteed to drop the Duelist Helm, but... Um, I think it is, yes. The the entire Rotten Duelist set can be found in this area, and that is the one that drops the helm. Okay, okay. Now, Grabbins. there is a bunch of wandering nobles in this area, and I would normally tell you what it is that they drop, but this is never going to be a point in the game where you're ever going to try and farm the items off these guys. So it's just, you're never even going to fight them, really. So you're going to head east until you find those nobles that are kind of, there's like a, three of them with a torch. And then you take, and then you head north from there. And I think we picked up a, I think maybe a prayer book we picked up. It or was, was a cookbook. That? Cookbook, cookbook. So now we're heading back to the, um, the, the hidden path. 
uh, bonfire. And then we are now we are hugging the right hand side. So initially we'd come out that door and hug the left, and that's the cliff. Now we're hugging the right hand side, and this is the wall. And uh, we're just going to take this pretty much as far as it can take us, um, and then it will we will end up reaching uh, a dungeon to do. Yeah. Now, Snowfield is a pain in the ass to navigate, especially if you're doing it without a guide. The way the... Um, all credit to you for this, by the way, Tony, because I did not help with the routing in this area at all. Um, yeah, the, the routing through this area is about as good as it could possibly be. Um, dropping off that little cliff and your signal that you're in the right place is the... Um, scarab. The scarab will be making a noise. So, so you'll know you're in the right spot. I figured that when doing the navigation, there has to be something that you can have to kind of, like, you know, keep your bearings, essentially. And effectively, you have a wall and a cliff. Um, and then yeah. and then you can kind of head in a direction just slightly off that path to kind of pick up an item that you wouldn't naturally get if you were just hugging the wall or the cliff. But, um, yeah, like, strictly speaking, you can't really go wrong so long as you hug this cliff wall. Or rather, yeah, cliff wall, I suppose. Um, then eventually you will... Oh, I'm going to pick that up. Thanks for your incredibly low turning circle. But, yeah, now we are at... Uh, what is this one called again? This is the... Snowfield Catacombs. Yes. And uh, this one is uh, this one's actually a bit of a pain in the ass, actually. I think this is the final imp catacomb in the whole game. Maybe. But, strictly speaking, we're going to grab a couple more items before doing this. Uh, just wanted to kind of um, wrap up this outside area. So we're going to head west from the doorway of the catacombs. So that is something, again, to anchor your spot. And when you head west, there'll be some... Uh, There'll be like some uh, wolves. We can grab that old fang. But specifically, when you head west, there should be some torches and these nobles. Kill this one for a big rune. Yeah, it's a treasury noble. As I've said in multiple parts before, kill it once, grab the rune. It will not drop it again, so you cannot farm it for all those runes. So again, continuing west, there'll be this tree with all these lights around it. So again, that's another notable landmark that you can discover. There will be uh, a golden seed... By this point, you probably have all the golden seeds you need. In case you don't, well, there's one. But now, there is um, a traveling caravan that will pass this area. So long as you rest at that grace and head west, if you wait here long enough, this caravan will pass. And what this means is that the caravan will come to you as opposed to you try to find it. So, you know, thank me later. Or thank me now in the comments. I want to see thank yous. I want to see a lot of thank yous in chat, actually. If you so for the unobservant, there are actually Kaiden Cell Swords following this cart. Now, it would be remiss of me to not mention what it is they drop, even though you're never going to farm their items in this area, but they can drop the Kaiden Armor Set, so that's the armor, the helm, the gauntlets, the trousers. They can also just drop Dismounter and three different kinds of raisin. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. We'll just talk about the nobles as well. So first of all, we've got the common noble. Those are the ones that don't have any headpiece on. They can drop the Aristocrat Garb, and the Noble Slender Sword. Next, we've got the Soldier Noble. Those are the ones that have the feathered cap on. They can drop the Aristocrat Hat, the Aristocrat Coat, which is different from the Aristocrat Garb that the Common Nobles use. They can also drop the Noble's Estoc. Next is the Old Nobles. Those are the ones that have the banner or the horn that they can blow to attract attention. They have the Old Aristocrat Kibble, the Old Aristocrat Gown, and the Old Aristocrat Shoes. Next, we have the Noble Saucers. They can drop the Aristocrat Headband, the Aristocrat Garb, which is the same as the Common Nobles have. Then they can drop the Aristocrat Boots and the Glintstone Staff, but we've already got that because that drops guaranteed from the Noble Saucer in Lingrave. Don't say thank you, you're a bastard. But then we get the Centrina's Torch out of that carriage, uh, which is actually a pretty good item. And now we can head around the tree, and I think there's a, a big smith and stone to grab. So we're heading around the tree, right at the back of it. If we can find it. Right, so there's this uh, rock pile. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually a fallen tree or a big rock, but yeah, we're going to grab this somber smith and stone nine, and now we can head back to the catacomb. Aye, be careful of the, uh, the ball lightning in this area, because... Yes. Right, you thought they hit hard in Shifra River. Here they will just delete you. Yeah, they, they don't will... even deal damage, they just set target health zero. 
<laughs> yeah. Just don't no. get hit by them, you will just die. Now, a sort of easy way of getting back to the catacombs, funnily enough, is because we headed west from the catacombs, if you head east uh, directly from the Somber Smith and Stone 9, uh, okay, well, actually, that wasn't true. I did kind of miss it. But basically, you can head far enough away where you can then warp, and then you can warp straight back here. So no harm, no foul, you know? As soon as you can warp, you're straight back, and now we can do the catacombs. I'd like to think that was fairly... Um, Efficient. If anybody can think of a more efficient way of doing things, by all means, stick it in the comments as well. Yeah, please do, because that was relatively painless as it stands. Um, so, we put on the uh, Claw Talisman, which increases our jump attack damage. We've put our Margit Shackle on our item bar, because we actually need to use it a lot in this one. And we've put Crag Blade on our weapon. Now, what we can do now is I think this means that most enemies will just die in one jump attack with this specific combination of uh, of like buffs and talismans, I guess. Um, this yeah. just means... Because the imps in this area are just slightly difficult enough that like two hits just felt that it was like if you can't kill it in one hit, it was just a bit annoying. So with the claw talisman, with crag blade... It will allow you to kill all the imps in one hit, and that's uh, nice and painless. What this feels like is... See, when you were in Limgrave, way back when, and it was the first time you'd encountered imps because you'd gone to a catacomb before you'd found any gear or leveled up at all? That's what this feels like. Yeah. Because they are doing, like, I've just started playing the game and have nothing levels of damage to you in this catacomb. Like, look at the f look at that! Half your health gone, because you made the mistake of existing in the same space as this thing. Yeah. Uh. Right, since so, we're in an imp catacomb and we're kind of imprisoned by the pillar, the imps can drop for the last <laughs> time. The forked grey sword, the forked hatchet, the imp head, wolf, cat, fanged, and long-tongued. Yes. So now I've managed to bait this cat down here. Do I kill it? Maybe. I think I might I might just ignore it. Oh my god, what a horrible what a horrible way to fight this thing. What a horrible thing to fight, so it only makes sense. Yeah. Oh, god. It's just, it deals damage to you by existing you see what I mean? It exists in the same space as you just deals damage. Fuck this thing. Fuck this area, fuck these enemies, honestly. God, I yeah. hate this catacomb. <sighs> right, so now that I'm getting that's second hand stress watching this. <laughs> I'm getting first hand stress. And I'm getting PTSD and I need to live it all over again. <laughs> so grabbing that glove wart. I think there's another glove wart in this room. And then there's another bunch of imps drop down. Like, oh, for fuck's sake, man. Apparently, I don't intend on fighting them. Hopefully, that doesn't come back to bite me in the arse. The best okay. solution you have there, really, is running away from these imps and then immediately save quitting once you're back in this room. Yeah, almost certainly, actually, because three of these super strong imps is, uh... I mean, it's do it is doable. Don't worry, it's not fucking impossible, but... Annoying? Certainly. You are just dancing with death, though. Basically. So, hitting that up to make it rise up. There's also an another imp, right... I tried to avoid this thing's attack, right? Still got me, right? So be aware of this guy and his stupid fucking trap. Not only that, you're getting peppered off this imp up here. It's really, really horrible, actually. Again, like I said, if you take the sword seal off and you put on the physical defense increased talisman, you will probably have a much easier time, I will admit, but... So there's the Imp Head Elder, and we're not fighting this cat. We've got a Grave Glove Wart 9. Cool. We've got some Human Bone Shards. Not that is as one cool. of the fixed Imp Head drops. Um, yes. There are three of them. You can get a fixed Imp Head Wolf. You get the Imp Head Elder in this catacomb, and you get the Imp Head Corpse in Lane Dell. Fighting a Clean Rot Knight here. This is a Spear and Sword Clean Rot Knight. Meaning it can drop both the sword and the spear. It can also drop the clean rot helm, armor, gauntlets, and greaves. Yes, it can also drop the halo scythe if it's wielding it. Correct. 
So, All good gear, yeah. by the way. Everything yeah, they drop yeah. is pretty good. Uh, Trina's lollies and Michaela's lollies as well. Also good. So watching out for this imp. Um, because they love a fucking imp ambush. Oh, they love it. They absolutely love it. Oi. <sighs> Great. Thank you, Miyazaki, for making that slightly too tall to just walk onto. I know, I know. Oh, it's so infuriating. So there we go. Hey. On to now. And don't worry, we're going to get that uh, glove wart in just a second. There's a slightly more efficient way of doing this. Uh, so we can grab that golden rune 12, pull the boss lever, grab this. And now, we could probably just dropped off, but it's kind of fine. We can uh, ride this down, run in here. We don't need to fight the clean rot knights now because we're just running away. Go bam, there's a ghost glove wart. There's the, the, the halo scythe. Um, and then you go But grab don't this. farm it here, farm it in Kaelid if you really want one. Yeah, yeah, just go to... Shaded Castle. <laughs> there was a big window there. <laughs> yep. So now Shaded the Castle, the Aeonia Swamp, whatever. So it's hilariously, list. yeah, it's quite funny that the boss in this area is by far the easiest part of it. Uh, this is one of those enemies that we're just incredibly geared towards killing. So yeah, just lion claw. claw just took off a third of its health. <laughs> um, bang! Yeah, absolutely fucking shit it. The mimic stole your kill again. Yeah, the mimic fucking uh, loves doing that. So there's a great the worst teammate. A great grave glove wart, and there's the kind of the cloak for the grave warden duelist thing. The rotten duelist cloak, yeah. Yes, yes, sorry. Which has a unique interaction with the helmet where it will put the hood up, which looks quite cool. That is cool. We like it when that happens. Indeed, so now, we do. From the catacombs, we are heading back out again and holding the right hand wall like we were doing. And then we're going to take this all the way to its logical conclusion as well, I think. So yeah, but this navigation's a bit of a pain in the ass because there are some drops you've got to do coming up, so pay attention. So, the, if you're doing it correctly, you've got that hefty beast bones, and then if you look right, there's a golden rune 9, and then if you continue on a little bit further, there's this big stack of uh, square rocks. Now, I fuck up this drop and die, uh, although I think that I do a swish edit to show you exactly what you should be doing instead. So Thank you, here, Mr. Editing Man. Yes, so up here is a somber smith in stone 8. Now what you're going to do is look uh, northeast and drop down on the northeastern face of this big rock pile. Slowly and steadily. Yes, and that is how you descend the rock pile without dying. <laughs> uh, and now there's a, a graven uh, mass, which is to the north. You drop down off that. And then you follow this, and then you drop down again, hugging the wall. And now you're at the rise. Which, there's a very easy way of doing it, actually. So you can get a rune arc from this chest. Oh, I can't remember what the easy thing is. I think you just jump onto the ceiling, actually. You can't, no. But you used to be able to. You used to be able oh. to skip the puzzle, but they've since put a... Uh, oh, torrent taking the fall damage for you there, which is nice. Um... You used to be able to skip the puzzle entirely, but they have since closed the uh, the top of this place off. You now actually have to do the puzzle, which involves getting an imp to kill an imp in this area. Now, the cool news is, is what you can do is there's two imps floating around the outside of here. You can use crystal darts to make them fight each other, and as a result, that will get the, the rise to open. The other logical thing that you can do is summon the imps and then have your imps will gang up and fight and kill at least one of their imps and then that'll open their eyes. But if you don't have the imps and you can't be arsed going away and fucking buying it and then summon it, you can just use crystal darts to make them fight each other. Far quicker, far easier. And your reward is the Graven Mass Talisman. Now, we picked up the Graven School Talisman earlier. One is a 4% sorcery damage increase. The other is an 8% sorcery damage increase. The one we just picked up being the 8%. They do stack. 
and it is one of the ingredients for max sorcery damage. Those are the Magic Scorpion Charm and the Godfrey's Icon. Picking up a so, cookbook there, and I yep. think now think we was, have uh, some more drop-offs to do. Yes, yeah, so that cookbook, I think, was uh, just heading straight forward from the Rise door, and then we head back to the Rise, and there is one of the the wall gravestones to do. And then this lets us drop off down into a... Oh, God, it's a, it's a tricky drop-off, I will admit. Um, the fact that I didn't die there is crazy. So, yeah, just be way <laughs> more careful with me on the drop-offs, please. Generally, the ones you have to drop to are illuminated by these little glows. Um, either that or you can see them through the fog. Um... See the glow, glowy down there? Means it's safe to drop off. And there's a great dragonfly head and a big crab, because FromSoft loves a crab. Um, so now we can and now we're in visible snowfield area. Hooray. Yes, so this means we can now navigate snowfield via the... Um, I guess I guess this is like a, fro a frozen or dried up and then frozen riverbed, I guess. But we're heading west along it and up where... Uh, I think I just, I think I actually passed it. But yes, up at that kind of like spiky ridge is where the grace is. And there's a bunch of shit that we got to do from the grace. So yeah, pay close attention to what we're about to do because this is very important. This is required reading. So for whatever reason, I completely uh, messed up the the first so much footage for fighting the rune bear. Now, everybody should be aware of the rune bear in this area. To do it, we're going to use Wild Strikes, we're going to use uh, an Iron Jar Aromatic, and we're going to use um, Blood Flame Blade. This is the best way of fighting the Rune Bears, we've discovered anyway. It's uh... There's other ways of doing it, but just pay attention to this one just now, and then I'll mention the other ways. So, equip the Iron Jar Aromatic before doing this. Then use Blood Flame Blade, ignore these guys, and you want to kill this one stuck in the snow. This will turn into a bear, but you want to have Wild Strikes, use Wild Strikes to kill the one in the snow, and then keep swinging. Um, just do not stop swinging Wild Strikes, and then eventually the bear will be knocked over, and then you'll be inflicting bleed via Blood Flame Blade, and that is how you kill that rune bear. And trust me, this is the best method. And it drops a fucking larval tier. That singular room bear might be one of the toughest enemies in the entire game. Yep. It's uh, up there with the fucking Caleb Golem and all that shit. So now we're back. At, we've warped back to the Grace. Um, we've put our... Uh, I th so we've now uh, switched it to Nightfall. And we've got our... Um, Black Riders killing set up. I keep forgetting the fucking name of them. Knight's Cavalry. So we've got the Icon Shield on. We've got the Lightning Scorpion Charm. Definitely, if you have the Lightning Scorpion Charm on, you should probably take the Radigan Sword Seal off. But we've got the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tier on. And we have the Lightning Damage Crystal Tier on. And we've got Thunderbolt equipped to our Great Stars. So now, um, there's a really cool trick. So it used to be the case that you would use Rot Breath and kind of juggle them... Um, there's like an AI glitch you can do, or a bug or something. You hit them, get their aggro, and then you bring them back to this grace. Now, what you can do is, you, I suppose you can rot it if you want to, but whenever you get close to the grace, it stops attacking you. But what you can do is just get its aggro, and then when it's walking away, head back to the grace, and then it just stops fucking attacking you. And then you can just keep <laughs> repeating this. This, this is the method, by the way. This is the method. And we fucking discovered it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Dudes uh, will be hitting Knight's Cavalries with Thunderbolt and just think, hell yeah. Yeah, hell yeah's in chat for this, right? Because this is easily one of the most fucking... The worst encounters in the game turned into one of the easiest, shittiest fucking fuck you encounters of the game. <laughs> because if anybody has tried to fight these two things, quote unquote, legitimately... It is a fucking nightmare. Easily one of the worst encounters in the game, if not the worst encounter in the game. And it used to be, instead of using Thunderbolt, you would use Rot Breath, and you'd get it rotted, and you'd kind of 
get its aggro and then make it walk away by going to the grace and, and kind of repeat that so it's kind of close by so you can re-rot it. Now, you don't even need to do that. You can just fucking thunderbolt the fucker to death and it's so, so much faster. You are seeing the the damage that Thunderbolt can actually dish out there. With the setup we've got, it's dealing 900 a, a strike. Um, and if you'd been investing in Dexterity, say you were using the Katanas still, and you'd been Dex dumping instead of Strength dumping, like we have for the Great Stars, um, you could be getting even more damage out of this because Dexterity Infusions scale off... Uh, sorry, Lightning Infusions scale off of your Dexterity. So you would be dealing absolutely devastating fucking damage. We're dealing good damage. You would be dealing significantly better damage if you were on a Dexterity build. I don't even think this guy, like, either of them even done any damage to us at this stage. I mean, thanks to the Icon Shield and a Flask or two, no, they haven't. Um, we did almost, very almost get murked by one of the pages on the way back though. We got hit with the triple burst um, bolt from the high page enemies. And it sta um, staggered us just enough that the Knight's Cavalry very almost caught up. And if it had knocked you off Torrent, that would have been it. That would have been game over. So for that we get an Ancient Dragon Smith and Stone and the full Knight's Cavalry armor. So pretty worth it actually. Um, so also for talking about the bear by the way, what you can do is you can use the uh, either sleep pots or this Drina's Torch to put the bear to sleep, and then you can use Poison Mist on it, and you can effectively just juggle the bear to sleep and keep it poisoned. Now, it takes fucking forever to kill it by doing that, so just so you're aware, but if you're not able to use this particular setup to kill the bear, you can just put it to sleep and poison it and just wait, like, 10 or 15 minutes for it to die. Um, it'll sleep for about a minute, so you do need to keep sleeping it a lot, but if it's asleep, it isn't attacking you. So that is one way of dealing with a bear. But it's nowhere near as good as the method we used. So it's uh, not even really worth showing. So heading into, it's heading further northwest-ish along the frozen riverbank. You will then be invaded. We currently have wild strikes equipped. So that's pretty good. Um, I think we... Uh, there's an edit where we switched our gear back. Yeah, we've just gone back to the standard setup. You've seen it a hundred times before, except instead of Lion's Claw, we have Wild Strikes. Now, Anastasia hitting like a fucking truck, as she does at several stages throughout the game, but this is the final Anastasia invasion. She was about to use Prayerful Strike on you. She was going to use your own spells against you. Um, didn't manage to get it off, and you get a Somber Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone for killing her. Um, so your total rewards from her... Amount to the Sacred Scorpion Charm, the Ancient Dragon Smithing, uh, Summer Ancient Sm Dragon Smithing Stone, sorry, and the Sacred, but not Sacred, Butchering Knife. Try so, not to get murked by those Ball Lightnings and grab yes. the Stone Sword Key. Uh, those Ball Lightnings actually did kill me on one of our recording sessions, so they can put out a lot of damage, so really be aware that they're there and take a wide angle around them. Now, uh, we've got a Scarab to kill, so we're going to use Storm Stomp. On a dagger. Yep. You're seeing a needlessly adorable thing happening right now. Yeah. It didn't Whoops. need to be this cute, but FromSoft went hard, I guess. Um, so I missed the timing, sadly, but... And now the is. wolves are pissed at you because you... I don't know, you're trying to take the toy off them. Wait, how did that not kill it? What the fuck? <laughs> I remember this happening and we were both flabbergasted. <laughs> That's so strange. Okay. Well, at least it knocked out of being invisible. So we get White Shadow's Lure, which... I, Literally pointless. Yeah, it's shit, right? It's Don't ever this. use it. It's a waste of time. One of the only occult ashes in the game. Absolute dog shit. It just grabs enemy's attention. But do you know what else grabs enemy's attention? A throwing knife. <laughs> um, so, just literally do anything other than waste your L2 slot on that ash. Do not so, fucking do that. So now we are putting Flame and Strike on our um, Great Star, and I'm pretty sure you know what's going to be coming up next if we're using Flame and Strike. That's right, it is uh, one of the last air tree avatars in the game. So heading across the river towards this big white tree, and there's a few items to pick up. So this is near the uh, the map fragment that we picked up. I think this is the first time we'll be encountering the uh, Albanoric Archers. Um, yes. They can drop the full blue silver set and the Albanorix bow, I believe. 
Ah, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. I think you are correct there. So that's the, that's the archers that are on the back of the wolves. Yeah, or indeed the ones that are just knelt down. Yes, the full um, blue silver set, the albinoric bow they can drop, arrows, Centrina's arrows, and albinoric blood clots. Aye. Uh, the albinoric bow, by the way, is pretty much a direct upgrade to the longbow. If you are using it for its scaling, um, the albinoric bow is just the longbow, but better. Um, we do have the pulley, the pulley bow. bow. Yeah. <laughs> we do have the pulley but bow, the... which is also the longbow, but better. <laughs> yeah, and you get it significantly earlier, and you don't have to farm an annoying set of enemies to get it. Although the albinoric bow does look really cool, so if you go in for that kind of Robin Hood vibe aesthetically, the albinoric bow is is definitely the way to go there. There was a scarab on top of that pillar. Yep. There's another scarab on top of this pillar. Um, so and the these albinorics in this area are kind of weird, by the way, because they can cast golden order incantations at you. I... Um, for that some reason, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, the, the, the dumpy guys are the second generation albinorics. Uh, so Somber Smith and Sony out of that, so probably worth it. But yeah, the, the, the kind of like fat frog face guys are the second generation albinorics, which are very fucking different looking from the albinorics that just look like people. I don't, I don't know, know what went there. wrong in the formula. Yeah. Somebody missed a semicolon in their code. Um... <laughs> yeah. uh, so those were also uh, guardians, air tree guardians. They can drop the guardian set, the guardian sword spear. Uh, and none of these have the full bloom set. So these ones specifically just drop the guardian set and the guardian sword spear. And um, the Albinorix, so we're just picking up items now. The Albinorix can drop. Fuck, where is it? I missed it. They can drop the Ripple Crescent Halberd if they're wielding it. And I think the. Um, like the, the Filthy Chainmail. Filthy Chainmail's armor set and drop the Curved Club, the Curved Great Club, the Ripple Crescent Halberd, and the Albinoric Shield. But you get the headpiece specifically from Volcano Manor in a pickup, so you should already have the Albinoric head. Indeed. And despite wielding the Ripple Blade, they do not drop it. That that and the yeah. Shamshir. Yes, okay, you get so... the Shamshir in a cave, and you get the Ripple Blade from Pidia. So, uh, Air Tree Avatar, we've used the Physic Flask, we've used Golden Vow, we've summoned the Mimic Tear, and we are just spamming Flame and Strike at this thing. Avoid this attack when he does it by running away. But otherwise... Uh, also, uh, again, specifically this is a rotted one, so you have to try and get behind it as much as you can to avoid the, the rot wave attack. And you can do that quite easily with your locked onto it, you roll into its attacks, and you kind of roll around behind it as a result. And we get the thorny crack tier, and we've got another tier that I missed the name of. The second half of the ruptured crystal tier, but with that Sweet. said, I think... After setting our gear back, that'll be it for part 39. Yep. Nice. And okay, there we go. That's Snowfield part one done. Join us in part 40, where we're going to be doing Snowfield part two. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.